Hi, I'm back with another video. While I'm out here in my yard picking up trash, people from the road throw in the yard. I wanted to talk about um, something that I've been saying. When I've been throwing my comments on um, Tone Talk and Events um, Lives. And he, he said something today that totally rings, resonate, it's true with me. These ruins fall out of the tree. This rings true with me. When they say, Obama wasn't the black first black president. I'm like, Obama is the first black president. He just not African American. Oh, he's a, he's immigrant American, and he's not Adolf. Oh, Negro, or whatever. But what it is. He is the first black president because Obama is black. There is no denying that he's black. He's black. And since black is not a race, but the word black is based on skin tone. When it comes to wealth and being able to live your best life on this planet, like we all have a prerogative to do. So, with that being said, Adolf have picked up the movement, and see, they just throw this stuff in the yard from the road. But anyway, that's what drivers do. So, what we do? I'm gonna miss losing my thought. Picking, we just picking my thought. Oh, someone throw a Patron bottle. This is Patron. Throw a Patron bottle in the yard. Oh my, Patron. That's a can over there. I don't, I don't have enough can. I don't have enough hand left for that. But anyway. They, Tone and Yvette tend to have a negative perspective for the baby boomers. And with me being a baby boom, being born in 1960, I, I think the last baby boomer were born in 1965 is how they got that date. But me being a baby boomer, when their negative perspective comes out based on baby boomers having all the wealth and baby boomers just take everything, this and that. I have to throw my comment in there. I have to throw my perspective in there. The baby boomers got what they got because they worked hard. And I'm specifically talking about black baby boomers because um, my mom is a baby boomer. my mama baby boomer? My mama born 40. So, she born 40. So, I think baby boomer is five, I think a baby boomer is five years before her time. So, she's a, so I, I don't remember what they call those before the baby boomers. I used to know. But, um, it's in my memory, it's in my memory somewhere. But anyway, uh, my parents, in my teenage years, in my 
high school years, bought their property. And they never bought property before that, even though the white folks was telling my dad, because that's where we grew up on the white folks' farm, telling him, you need to buy, you need to buy land, buy a house, and put my mama in it. It was seven of us. My dad never saw the need to do that. And just one day, when we was teenagers, he went down and bought, he, he bought some land from a man he worked for for years. He bought the land, a third acre of the land. Then one day, and after they paid the land completely off, then they went and bought a trailer and put the trailer on it. And when Daddy died, and you know you put all that years in the trailer, you never really pay it off because of, because of the the interest rate is way more than the cost of the trailer itself. So when Daddy died, we um, we told him to come get the trailer because the property was the property was was of value to us, not the trailer itself, because you know trailers depreciate. So when Daddy died, the trailer went to thing went to Mama, Mama um. Now we are taking care of Mama. Mama had everything signed over in the name, in my sister's name. That way, the land and property, everything transferred to my sister. So, now, as for all, as for the seven of us, we put like me, um, I'm buying this property. I got like eight more years on this property. We've been here 21 years. We've been here, we've been here 20, we've been here 21 years in August. 21 years, eight more years and we pay it off. According to the contract, I looked it up anyway, and then my sister, she owned two or three properties. She buying property. She rents them out. My brother, he owns this property. He buying it to buy a townhouse and then a, um, a nice house for his wife, kids, because, you know, he contracts for the government. And then I have a couple of them. And then my older sister, she didn't grow up with us. She has her property. Then I have two other siblings, or three. I got three other siblings that really don't own anything. Well, somehow I got my sister who basically everybody put over everything. She like the fourth to me. They a lot to do everything. I guess she more business minded or whatever. So she's over everything and I kind of got in there a little bit and convinced her, regardless of what's going on, those three siblings need to always have a place to stay because she has three properties and they all live in that one and she bought her another one for herself for her retirement and she got that paid it off and everything and then she got another one that just growing up was you know so with all of that said the baby boomers work hard for what they got they may have saying oh we didn't do this and we didn't do that and our parents, who are baby boomers, didn't do this, didn't do that. Yeah. I don't know what it's called from, but I feel like a spider called a virus. But I don't do them calling them either, but I'm gonna set that there. And I'll pick that up later. I get ready to go in. Right now, let me um finish doing this. But anyway. With all that said, baby boomers work hard. What was baby boomers supposed to do? They worked with what they had. The baby boomers were birthed and raised by the, um, I guess what we call Jim Crow children. Because segregation came to the schools when I was in fourth or fifth grade, I think. They came in and brought one little white girl to our school and took one or two black kids to the white school. So I remember that like yesterday. But they raised my parents and grandparents from the Jim Crow days raised us and gave us what they had, which is the education of basically well, well, basically what my dad taught us. We live among the white folks, but you deal with white folks, you do this, you do that, but always stay in your place. And 
And sometimes we might do things, you know, because we're the kind of people, we're not racist. We didn't know what a racist was until Obama caught in the seat. But we, when we would do things, we would get cussed out, whatever, and, and taught, you, you don't do that. You stay in your place, you this, you that. So that's basically how, that's basically what they gave us. They didn't have anything. They grew up on their property of white folks. And we worked their farms. And as I was growing up, I got a little bit of bull whirl. The, my grandparents and parent were, and as I'm growing up to see what's, what's coming out of them. I know nothing about no Jim Crow and all of that craziness. I didn't have a problem with white folks because we were raised to love and like everybody. But when it comes to white folks, we was raised to stay in our place. And we were also raised that they, they are not better than us. We are equally, we are equal to them. They live this way. And we could have lived in the white neighborhood. My dad said no. They gave us land. My dad could have my dad could have had land in his name. They gave my dad land in his name. You know, he said no. So they moved us into town, into the white neighborhood, among all the white people. They wanted us to be separated from the black people, which in most part we was. Because when I grew up, we didn't we didn't grow up. We grew up in open country, so that's how we grew up. So we didn't grow up. And a lot of black people may not have grown up in cities like that. We grew up in the country. So we didn't, let's say like in the inner cities of Chicago and that. So we didn't grow up, we didn't grow up in nothing like that. We, know, we didn't even know that exists. But we grew up coming up through that. What we, what we baby boomers have is what our parents give us. They could not give us the political and because you know because you know in 65 it's when everything you know i didn't know i, I never heard about um my martin luther king growing up mm, you know nothing about it so all of this political stuff going on we didn't know nothing about it my parents didn't know nothing about it they might have heard because we didn't have tv so how are we gonna know anything but we live in the country parts in the deep country part of, this, of, of South Carolina, the deep south. You got the Mississippi and the Alabama and the Georgia and all of that. All of that's the deep south. But I grew up in the Carolinas. Deep south was of Carolina. So that's all I know. But as we grow up, you know, and we, and I look at white people who tell me when I went to buy my home, me and my husband went to buy a house. We shouldn't buy a house because we got to pay all the taxes, this and that. I looked at her like, what? You buy a house, but you won't tell me I can't buy a house. My parents also taught us to respect them too. So I always respected them. I always kept my mouth. But my eyes always told a story and that always got, that always got me in trouble. Even though I kept my mouth. The look on my face told a whole story. <laughs> and I've been trying to figure out how not to be so obvious in my face. But anyway, I got married six months, I think six months into the marriage, me and my husband bought our first house. Because I was living on the property of my landlord. Because we're all cousins down there. But. Because everybody sleep with everybody's husband and, ha and having babies with everybody, so that's the kind of cousin I'm talking about. But the thing about it is this. Um, so we bought our first house. You know, we got a balloon payment. But once we realized what a balloon payment was in the five years into the house, we tried to sell the house. The landlord decided that. The mortgage company told me, called me on the phone, and told me we're not allowed to sell our house. I said, how, you know, I said, how am I not allowed to sell my house? I said, 
Because we had a guy that was going to buy, and my husband had a friend that was going to buy the house for us. And he told us we couldn't sell the house. I said, well, if I can't sell my house that I'm buying, you can keep it. So we kept it, and then we got a lawyer and got out of it. You know, because they tried to ruin us for the rest of our lives for that house. And we went to a white guy, and he sent us to his lawyer, and they fixed that. That way, like a year or so into giving that house back, we rent it from another black couple. We always rent from black, always rent from black people. We never rent, we never rent it from white people because because we grew up among white people. But when I got married and whatever, we rented black property. But anyway. That did, after a couple of two or three years, that didn't work out so well. Because you know, you got paranoid, prejudiced people who, who think you doing something that you're actually not doing. Because we're the kind of people, we like to be mind our business. So when crap go down and people thinking we doing something we ain't doing, pulling this out the tree. Thinking we doing something we not doing, and then ask us to leave. You know what? It turned out to be the best thing because on my spiritual journey, bad things or wrongs that happen to you is a good thing because what it do is moving that out of the way for you to get better. And so what did we do? After two weeks of running. Running around looking the real estate book and running around finding the best property and back and forth at the trailer company getting the best deal on the trailer. We finally got this property 21 years ago. We got this property, and all through. economic crash when everybody was losing their property because of those prime rates or whatever kind of rates those was we didn't lose anything and if I think back when we was um, closing on the trailer and this land here um, I told the guy who sold us a trail when he tried to give us a uh, high interest rate like because the first house we bought, tried to buy she gave us an 18% interest rate that was the interest rate on the car on the car we had I wasn't about to pay that on the house because I already knew better oh ants are eating me up I already knew better oh.